in between. There are times in life when we find ourselves in between, when we have crossed a threshold, leaving what is known behind and not yet knowing what is to come. It may feel vast or spacious, filled with possibility, and yet it can be a bit unnerving. It's a time of pause, of waiting, waiting for what is to come, hoping for what is to come, dreaming for what is to come. Today in our church calendar, we find ourselves in between the ascension of Christ, which was celebrated on Thursday, when the disciples watched as Christ was taken up into heaven, and the coming of the Holy Spirit in Pentecost, which will be next Sunday, when the Spirit will come and alight and kindle a fire in believers. So today is a bit of a pause between the hope of the past and the hope of the future. And sometimes we struggle to be in this space. It's hard to hold on to this space as the uncertainty sits beneath it all and kindles a concern. We want to relieve the building energy within by doing something, anything. We may find ourselves wanting to move, to drive forward into what may be waiting out there without thinking or allowing it to evolve. Doing so, we may miss the gift of one of the most important lessons in life. It is the in-between that invites us to explore depth and to hold the mounting energy, to contain and direct it into creating the future. If you've ever stood at the door of a significant change in life and found yourself uncertain and waiting, longing for an answer or a direction, you've experienced what psychologists and anthropologists call liminal space. As Jesus prepares for his final departure, he understands the disciples will face a time of unknowing. They will enter a liminal space and time. And Jesus is sending them out to share what they have experienced, learned, and witnessed as they have journeyed with him. They are to go to tell it to the world. So in the gospel, we get to overhear his prayer on their behalf. He speaks of what the disciples have come to know and understand about the intimacy Jesus has with God. They have learned the teachings of the word and believe God sent Jesus. And Jesus has been glorified in them. Now he prays on their behalf. He prays for their protection, that they may be one. He watched over them while with them, and only one was lost the one destined to be lost for the fulfillment of Scripture. He prays his joy may be made complete in them. He points to the liminal space of the challenge of not belonging to the world, yet they are to remain and live in the world. They will be hated as he has been. He prays, sanctify them in truth, bless them, make them holy. The disciples become apostles in their being sent, yet they are still missing one. And it's important that they are 12 in number. 12 is the number of perfection, authority, and completeness. The apostles become the link between the risen Christ and the church in telling the story of Jesus from his baptism to his ascension. In telling what they have witnessed, the movement continues. The faith spreads. There are requirements for Judas's replacement, the most important being it be someone who has been with them from the beginning. Of the 120 disciples with them, only two are eligible. Bas- Bas- Barabbas, also known as Justice, and Matthias. Neither of them are known to us. So the disciples pray for God to show them which of the two God chooses to join them in this ministry. Then they cast lots. 
Matthias is chosen and we don't hear about him again, it makes us wonder what happened to him. Could it be that he represents the men and women chosen by God, that we never know their names, the ones who serve in a specific place and time faithfully, without recognition or fame? Serving God isn't about fame or recognition. It's about going where one is sent, serving faithfully, praying without ceasing, telling the story and spreading the word, even when it is an in-between time, a liminal moment in life. The Acts of the Apostles tell us the story of what happened after Jesus ascended into heaven, how these twelve went out, these faithful ones who were sent, and how the fire of the Holy Spirit worked through them, kindled that warmth in others' hearts, or lit them ablaze with spirit. We, too, live in moments of in-between, individually and corporately. Today, we bless our high school graduates who are moving on into the next phase of their lives. They are in that liminal moment of in-between. They have completed their high school education. They have grown up and matured into young adults. And now they stand on the verge of independence, of what comes next, whether it be college, trade school, the armed forces, or taking a gap year. It's a time of vast possibility, of dreaming, of exploring life in a new way. So for them and for us, just as it was for the apostles, moments of in-between are are moments of possibility, and prayer opens the way for God to intervene, to lead, to show us the path, to kindle the spirit in our lives, to live into that future. So may the energy that is building in each of us be collected and directed by God to tell the sacred story through our lives lived each day, that we continue to tell the story, touch lives, and the world be changed by God's gracious design.